Guys, we got a new sponsor in town. Not just in town, but more like in the town square. Not just in the town square, but it's 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 more like in the space where the it's Squarespace, you guys get it. Now I know a majority of you guys watching could probably make your own website, but when Squarespace can make it for you, why not use that time to do other cool stuff? For instance, Squarespace will do all the heavy lifting with your online store, while you make a robot that determines whether the seat should be up or down. So go ahead and head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash tinkernut to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to the action. Speaking of websites, well, where'd my beard go? Wheezy waiter! Once upon a time, I did a video series about making your own website. Back in the day when the internet was open, Homestar Runner was still running, Justin Bieber was a thing, and Tinkernut made programming videos. Man, I miss those days. Kinda. You know what? Screw it. I'm doing it. Grab your text editor of choice and hold on tight because you're about to board the programming train. Woo woo! So what should we make and where should we start? Web server. Python. Those questions were actually pretty easy. I'm choosing to use Python because it's an extremely flexible programming language and it's really easy to learn. And there's tons of different packages and libraries to extend its capabilities, including turning it into a web server. So enough talk. Let's do. To kick it all off, let's install Python. If you don't already have it on your machine, you can go to python.org slash downloads to download it for your system. And if you're installing it on Windows, make sure to add it to your Windows path during the installation process. Because then when the installation is done, that allows you to open up a command prompt and access Python from there. So now with Python installed, we can install Flask using pip install Flask. So what is Flask? What? You just installed it and you don't know what it is? I didn't peg you to be the trusting type. Flask is what's called a micro framework for Python, which means it's basically a minimalistic web application. It's so minimalistic that it only takes a few lines of code to get a web server up and running. Let me show you. So using your text editor of choice, create a Python file called app.py and import the Flask class. Then assign it a variable. Next, we can use this route decorator to direct it to different web pages. The first page will be the home page in the root directory, and we're just going to define it as main, and then we'll send it the text, welcome to my Flask page. And basically, that's all you really need, but I'm going to add this if statement so that we can run it as localhost on port 80. If you didn't add this, it would run on port 5000 as the default. So save it, open up a command prompt, and run python space app.py to get it running. Then you can open up a web page and point it to either localhost 127.0.0.1 or your computer's IP address, and all of them should point to the same page, which is this one. And that's it. It's really that simple to get a web server up and running using Flask. But you want it to host more things than just text. Say, web pages, per chance? Hosting web pages using Flask isn't too difficult, but it does require a specific directory structure. And what we want to do is create a folder called templates for the web pages and create a folder called static to host the CSS, images, and other static content. So now let's create a new web page and save it to our templates folder as index.html. I'm just going to add some welcome text in a YouTube video to get started. Save it and then in your app.py file, import the render templates class and then in the main route, point it to the render template called index.html. Now you can save that and run app.py again in a command prompt and then open up your web browser to view the changes. So now you can write your own HTML code, put it in the templates folder and basically host it using Flask. But what about that static folder and using images and CSS? How do we do that? Sorry, when you ask me questions like that and you use my own voice, it's really annoying. Just kidding, I love the sound of my own voice. Anyway, here's how you do it. First off, I'll start out by moving some images to the static folder. And then I'm gonna create a new file and save it to the static folder as style.css. And this is where I'm gonna use one of the 
images as the background for the web page. So now you can save that and then hop back over to your index.html page and link to the style sheet in the header of the web page. And if you want to link to an image in the web page, just make sure you point to the static folder that it's in. And when you save it, run it and preview it, you should see all the changes. Now we're getting somewhere and hopefully having just a little bit of fun. Just a smidge bit, maybe, kinda. So now let's make another page and cover how to link to it. All right, let's create a new file called about.html and save it to our templates folder. And then let's just copy the code from index.html and paste it in there to save ourselves some time. I'm just gonna change a few things like the title and the content, and then let's see how we can create a new link. So the cool thing about Flask is that it allows you to run Python code within the HTML. And you can signify where the Python code starts and ends by using curly brackets. So what we can do is use Python code to point it to the URL for our main web page route. So save that and then hop over to your index.html page and do the same thing except point it to the about route instead of the main route. So if you want, you can add some CSS to style it, but the main thing is to go back to your app.py file and add a new route that points to the about web page. So you can save that and run it and then open up a web page to preview the changes. And if you click at the link on the bottom of the page, you should see the about.html page. But if you look at the URL, you see the route name that does not end in .html. And that kind of shows how Flask routes it to the proper web page. So that just about covers the basics of it. Of course, there's a lot more to Flask than this. And if you've used Flask before, let me know your favorite features in the comments below. If you haven't used Flask as a web server before, let me know what you would do with it, what you would host. If you have any ideas, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to donate at patreon.com slash tinkernut. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to youtube.com slash tinkernut.